Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday, April the 23rd, 2022. It is currently 1141 a.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from two stories above a street here in Abilene, Texas. Yes, I'm coming to you from a second story bedroom here in my home, Abilene, Texas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're having a great day if you're listening to me live. If you're not listening to me live, then I don't hope you're having, I'm joking. If you, Whenever you're listening, I hope you're having a great day, evening, morning, night, whenever it may be, wherever you may be, however you may be listening. Thank you so very much. Good morning, someone just said. Well, good morning to you as well. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope this will prove to be uh, beneficial and helpful. Now, on Monday, on Monday, maybe you care, maybe you don't care. But uh, Monday, I don't know how live broadcasts are going to work because I have jury duty on Monday. Yes, I have jury duty. The last time I had jury duty, I got selected for the trial and it was crazy, okay? But... So I don't know if I'll get selected this time, but I just called the number just a few minutes ago and they're like, nope, you have to show up. So I will be there Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. Taylor County Courthouse, jury duty. Maybe I could just bring the podcasting equipment there and and podcast, do podcasting episodes uh, from jury duty. That probably wouldn't be very exciting, but yes, that's where I will be on Monday but for now, it's Saturday. We have a lot to do. I know there are, I, I've received a number of emails. Oh, are you going to talk about this? Are you going to talk about this? You, I know there's so many different things. There are things I'm behind on. There's things we need to talk about. Sometimes I feel like I'm always like chasing. Like I can never, I can never finish the stack of stuff, right? I always have like, oh, we need to talk about this. We need to talk about this. I never get to everything. There's always new things to talk about. And then I always have different series that I'm working on. And it just feels like I'm always trying to catch and I can never, I can never get there. But, uh, and it's kind of bizarre if you think about it, considering how many episodes I produce a month, it's kind of bizarre to sit back and go, Man, you you didn't finish everything you needed to finish as many as many episodes you did. You would think that you ha- would have accomplished everything, but no, it doesn't always work that way. But we're not here to talk about that. Let's talk about yesterday. Let's talk about yesterday. Ye- yesterday was field trip day for homeschool, right? Today, yesterday, we decided to go on a field trip for our, for our homeschooling activity, and so. We put everyone in the car and we went to the Abilene State Park. Now, first of all, it's an outside activity. Not really my thing. Not really my my idea of fun because I'm not much of an outdoors person. But we went to the Abilene State Park, which I do have fond memories of because I spent a uh, a large section of my childhood running around Abilene State Park. I would, uh, I lived in Buffalo Gap, Texas which is about five miles away from Abilene State Park. And I would get, uh, especially in the summer, I would get on my bicycle, ride that five miles, spend the day at the pool at the Abilene State Park, and then ride five miles back. And and we would go just run around the state park. We did camping there, whatever uh, activities. Now, typically what I would do if my family went camping is uh, when it got time well, to go to sleep, I would try to, can someone just run me back to the house and I'll just stay there because who wants to sleep outside? Who wants to sleep in a tent when I have a house, right? So I wasn't the much, uh, the most outdoors person, but I spent a lot of time running around Abilene State Park. So I thought, okay, for field trip, we'll go to the Abilene State Park and I know what we'll do. Times are a little different. See, back when I was a kid, you just ran around, right? You just ran around for the sake of running around. There really was no purpose in what you were doing. You just ran around. You, I just, you just, but if I have a purpose, I have, if I have something to accomplish, then, then I handling outside, I, I can do like, if it's a sport, all right, basketball, football, you can name the sport and it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be outside. Okay. I have a purpose. Now, as soon as it's over, I'm going to go back inside, but just to be outside, For the sake of being outside, does it seem to be not only a a 
worthy purpose, it doesn't even seem to be reasonable to me because we've spent all of human history perfecting inside. Why would I want to go outside? But if I have a purpose, if I have a purpose, so yesterday's purpose was this. Listen carefully. Geocache. Yesterday's purpose was geocache. Yes, that was the purpose yesterday. We went to Abilene State Park to do geocaching or to look for geocache. Are you familiar with the term geocache? That's what we were doing yesterday. We were doing geocaching yesterday in the Abilene State Park, which which they, they gave me an actual purpose for being there. Now, if you don't know what a geocache is, let me give you some or geocaching is give you some basic information. Geocaching is an outdoor recreational activity. Okay. So it's, it's, it's outdoors. Okay. I guess I could do geocaching inside my house. Probably wouldn't be that challenging or fun, but geocaching is an outdoor recreational activity in which participants use a global positioning system receiver or mobile device and other navigational techniques to hide and seek containers called geocaches or caches. These are found at specific locations marked by coordinates all over the world. All right? So you're outside and there's these geocaches that are hidden, all right? All over the pl- all over the place, all right? They're all out there they're they're everywhere. Now, in the Abilene State Park, I can't remember how many they had. They, they had they had a quite a few. All right? And you you go looking for them now. If if you, if I'll just give you some some more information about geocaching, just because some people may not be familiar, and and every, and I know what you're thinking. I did not tune in to listen to you talk about geocaching. All right, okay, good. Someone just said that they have done geocache uh, geocaching in multiple states. All right, that's awesome. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some of you may not. But but the more you know about geocaching, this is going to be per- fit in perfectly for well, what I want to use it for. Because, you know, whatever I do, I, now, this just may be the fact that I don't know, I don't, I, I know very, look, here's what I know, okay? I don't know about, I don't, there's a lot of things I don't know about. Like most things, I have very little knowledge. But this is what I do know. I know music, because I've spent my life listening and music, 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 and theology, because all of my schooling is theology, the, uh, d- degrees in theology, degrees in religious education, degrees in biblical studies. That, that's all basically I know, music and theology. Okay, that's, that's it. I, di- I did spend a lot of time learning how to do film analysis and, and interpreting film, but that was really more based off my study of theology and hermeneutics and biblical studies. So th- there was kind of a connection there. So there's a lot of things I don't know. But because I do know a lot about those things, I have a tendency that whatever I'm doing, I'm looking for the theological lesson in it. I'm looking for the biblical lesson. I'm looking for the biblical, how do I, how do I relate this to something biblical or theological? So when I was out there doing geocaching yesterday, boom, I'm like, okay, I can relate this to theology, all right? And, and, and hopefully this will all make sense. So a, little, a, a couple of things. If you, if you can go to geocaching.com, that's G E O. C A C H I N G dot com. G E O C A C H I N G dot com. You can go there right now and it will show you all the geocaches in your local area. I bet you there's a lot close to you. I think there's one literally. If I go, uh, well, that they built a uh, kind of a building there, but pretty close to my backyard, there's a geocache right there. They're all over the place. They're all over the place. All right, but you can uh, go to geocaching.com. You can download the app, and once you download the app, they will show you all the geocaches in your specific area. All right. Now, a couple of things. Geo, if you don't know, means earth, and cache means hidden item. So geocache is a hidden item, well, somewhere on earth, okay? Geocaches range from very small, like a film canister, to a to large, such as a metal lunchbox. Many are camouflage, but they are usually they are not they're not supposed to be buried. I think I've come across a couple that for some weird reason I'm like, where is this? Um, and I think it ended up being buried. Geocaches hold things like a lock uh, a log book to sign your name. Uh, tradable items for kids and adults and more. All right, now, 
typically what happens, all right, typically what happens is before you go geocaching, you want to stop and you want to buy but just a bunch of things that you think would be cool at, to place in the geocache, right? It can be it could be your favorite paperback, it could be a book of quotes, it could be a notebook, whatever. And depending on the geocache you find, what happens is you take the treasure that is there, that's all yours, and then you replace it with something else for the next person to find. And it which just continues everyone having that treasure to find, all right? But basically, you download uh, the app, and once you download the app, it's going to show you where all the geocaches are. And you tap the screen on one, and it opens it up, and it's going to tell you, Okay, this is, it's going to start giving you the, basically the coordinates, how to find it. Like in the Abilene State Park, we would open it and we'd be like, okay, it would give you like an arrow in this direction, you know, one mile, two miles, 500 feet, whatever, whatever the thing is. And then you have to kind of keep with your phone, you're kind of, you're trying to figure out, especially in the state park, how to get there, how to navigate it. Now, in many cases, you're on a trail, an actual trail, but then the arrow is pointing, you know, the direction is pointing at you to leave the trail, like leave the trail and go, well, and I'm like, where are we going? And there's this hilarious video because we're we're trying to find this geocache. We're trying, we're trying. We've left the trail, probably a bad idea. We've left. We're just like hiking through the woods, right? I mean, it's just, there's no, there's no path. Just trying to walk is difficult enough. And then we find that, wait a minute. Now here's this creek that we, we either have to just wade through the creek to get across, or we're going to have to go find a different direction. And then we turn around and then we realize we are lost. Not only do we not know where the geocache is, we're in the middle of nowhere and I can't even find out where the trail is. We're lost. And so we all just start laughing because now we're lost. And I'm like, we're going to die here in Abilene State Park. And my last, you know, activity wasn't doing a podcast. It was looking for a geocache in the middle of the state park, and th they're going to find our bodies here in a couple of weeks, okay? Because I'm not going to be able to survive long outside, all right? So, but that's that's what you do. So basically, like, uh, like some basic rules, like here's here you, you obviously you download the app, and you're going to use the GPS on your smartphone to find the cache once, once you reach the destination. You're going you're to keep following it until you get near the destination, you approach uh, the ca the catch the, the cash the cash safely not c a s h but cash okay uh, c a uh, c a c h e is the the term uh, or the cache right the cache some of the best hiding spots can also be homes for wildlife open the container sign the log trade a family friendly item with something in the cache replace the container exactly as you found it this helps the next geocacher Log your find on geocaching.com. Collect a smiley face symbol and uh, for each find, for each find, for each report. And there's some basic rules, all right? It's, it's, it's a fun game uh, to me, especially out in the state park. It was fun. I mean, if it's a Saturday, you got nothing to do. Put everyone in the car, you know. Boom! Everyone grabs the phone and start looking for geocache. Uh, typically, it's a it's like a it's a more fun thing. I like doing it more like in a city area because you're just doing more driving around. You're just doing more driving. Then you get out of the car, you go and you get back into the air conditioning. Okay, but that's geocaching, right? So it's I think it's fun. Some people love it. Some people try it, and it's not their thing. But it, it's there, and it's it's free. Uh, other than maybe buying items to trade, you may have things in your house you want to trade. It's it's there. It's, I mean, to me, it, it's a fun activity that that changes things up. Like if you just kind of find yourself not, you know, you wake up, you don't really know what you're going to do today, and maybe just sitting there watching TV for hour after hour, or not really doing much. It's something fun to get out and do something different. So. As I, as we were walking around and doing geocaching, I started thinking, you know what? This, to me, what geocaching is, it's a physical reenactment of biblical hermeneutics. I think geocaching is nothing more than a physical reenactment of biblical hermeneutics. Like biblical hermeneutics, you're you're sitting in a, a, a you know a, in your study. You're sitting at a table. You you have all of your tools, and you're and you're and a, to me, you're doing geocaching. Just you're doing it in a you're doing it in a biblical way, right? You're doing it in a hermeneutical way, right? It's 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 a completely it's the same concept though. 
And when you go out geocaching, you're just taking that same concept of doing biblical hermeneutics, and now you're transferring it from the Bible, from the study, from the desk, to now out on foot, a park, state park, driving around a city, wherever it may be, wherever, a graveyard. I mean, lots of geocaches are hidden near cemeteries, right? Um, and and the, or are there? It's 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 just you're just physically acting it out. So like I, I was like we're just physically doing hermeneutics and everybody like be quiet we don't care okay but but that's what we're doing <laughs> that that's what we're doing. So I grab my notebook of course of course I grab my notebook. I can't can't be anywhere without my journal right. Okay in fact I need a new one all right I need a new one because this one is full all right I need a new journal all right so here we go. Here's what I wrote down. Just some basic, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to, I'm not gonna flesh this out perfectly because if I flesh it out perfectly, then I kind of ruins it out. Someone said it's a good, it's a good illustration. I hope so, uh, but you can flesh this out a little bit more now. And and I and I and to be honest, I think when I do film analysis, when I watch a movie and I'm sitting there interpreting the movie, to me that's just taking biblical hermeneutics and applying it to well the movie that I'm watching, or if I'm listening to a new album and I'm sitting there interpreting you know all the lyrics and. And the structure of the album. To me, it's the same thing. But let's let's apply this specifically to geocaching, geocache, and uh, hopefully this will be uh, beneficial. And so, what I, what I should do for the Bible study exercise, I should tell everyone that their next assignment is they have to go do at least one geocache. They have to at least do one because they will be doing physically what I'm trying to train you to do and your study of the Bible. But here is how th- some things I thought. I put geocache and the Bible. Number one, we both in geocaching and in with Bible study and hermeneutics, we start with a hidden treasure. Both of them, we start with something, a, a treasure that is hidden, something that we want to find. Okay, on the geocache, you open the app and you see all of them. There's all the treasures, right? Now you pick the one and you go after. Well, for me, it's it's very similar. Instead of a mobile device, now some people may use a mobile device for their Bible, but when I see my Bible, there is my treasure. There is my treasure. It is called the infallible, inspired word of God. If there is a God and that God gave us his word in written form, if you don't consider that a treasure, then either A, you don't believe that God exists, or B, you don't believe the Bible is truly his word. But if you believe there is a God and he's giving you his word, I think you would perceive that as the greatest treasure of all. The eternal sovereign creator of all things has given us his, in a sense, a part of his mind and his wisdom in written form, that should be the treasure of treasure. I, I, I've told you before the story when, I, when the night that I got saved in First Baptist Church, Tuscola, Texas, right before I left the church, handed me a Bible and said, this is the inspired word of God. And, all I, and when I touched it, I was like, wait, so God, his word. Now, I'd read the Bible all the way through, but I, I did so, I did so more like, I did so more to just, I wanted to know more about the Bible than the kids who went to school who claimed to be Christians so that I could mock them and make fun of them and destroy them in arguments. I didn't really care about the Bible before, but now that I was, I had become a Christian and I realized that this is the eternal word of God, I was like, whoa, okay, my whole perspective of it changed. Like, this is a treasure. This, this is the greatest thing ever. And we, we sing it in our church. And then when it goes to my church, probably knows it. Psalm chapter 19 we sing this as a uh, basically as a scripture song. Uh, we may have to do this. Uh, we may have to uh, sing this tomorrow. Uh, Psalm chapter nineteen. If we go to verse nine, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired. Speaking of God's word, God's judgments, God, God's law, everything in the Bible. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. The, the Bible is a treasure. It is the word of God. And we, and we start with that. So just like in geocaching, you open the app and there's the treasures right here. 66 books. All these verses, all of these words, treasure, 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 
treasure. Sadly, much of the, tre- just like in geocaching, many of those geocaches, like the one we found yesterday, we only found one. Um, the one we found yesterday, I don't think anyone had been to that one. I can't remember the last uh, the date. There, there was a log book in there and I can't remember the last date. Um, it, it hadn't been super long, but I mean, from that point, I think it'd been over a month. Over a month, it's just been sitting there. No one has gotten to it. No one's touched it. No one's found it or no one at least logged anything in the log book. Well, I think in many cases, there's lots of Christians that got a treasure sitting right there in their bookshelf, sitting there, I don't know, walking. They, they've got it in their, their pocket, right? They, they hold it in their, 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 their phone. They have their, the Bible right there, and they just spend day after day ignoring that treasure, ignoring that treasure. They don't care to, to, do, they don't care to look for it. They don't care to do any of the work. And there's lots of Christians who never do any geocaching when it comes to the Bible because they got better things to do with their time instead of looking for the treasure found in God's word. And and sadly to say, there's many churches who don't do a lot of geocaching because they don't really do much with the treasure in God's word as well. But it's a treasure, right? And, And it's just, to me, you know, if it's a treasure, then you're going to be willing to do, I mean, I'm out for geocaching. I mean, the little treasures you find, you may find interesting things in one of them. Someone who's been geocaching in multiple states could probably list some of the cool things that they have found. But uh, it's just like how, you know, you can go out there walking, driving, you putting forth effort to do geocaching, to find that next geocache. How much work and effort do we put in finding anything in our Bibles? Right, so we, we we start with a treasure. Number two, this is very important. You have coordinates. You have coordinates. This is how you find it. Right? It's based on the GPS. It's based off the global positioning system, satellite system. It, that, that's how you find it. You have your coordinates. This is how you find your geocache. You open your device, and it's going to give you those coordinates. Now, I remember back in the military um, when uh, I was in tech school. One night, I don't even know, it was late at night. Oh, man, it was like, I don't know. It felt like it was around midnight. Maybe it had been early morning. Um, they, they got us all up and they took us out literally into the middle of nowhere, okay? We're in the middle of nowhere. We were given a flashlight, a compass, a radio so that we could, you, we could communicate. What else did we have? We may have had a couple of other little tools, but they took us in the middle of nowhere, and basically this, the, the scenario that was played out, a plane had crashed, right? And that we needed to go find you know, the injured individuals, the injured patients, and we needed to bring them back to a location where they could receive medical care. Now, the patients in this particular case, in this scenario, was simply going to be these poles that were you know, placed in different locations. And they were giving us the basic longitude, latitude, giving us the basic coordinates. And we had to try to map out a coordinates to try to find it. They would say, we think we have one at this, at this, at this coordinate or this, or this one. And then yet we're out there in the middle of, of nowhere, hiking through the woods, trying to find them. Right. And it was just, you, you, this is all you had and you had to go find it. Now, in that particular case, this is like trying to find real people, you know, trying to find patients. We had to take it, you know, in a serious way. I mean, obviously, we're, we're, I was in the medical world. So this was like, you know, and, and trying to find those injured individuals to get them back so that they can receive adequate medical care and we can possibly save their life and, and treat their injuries. So I remember just, man, going through, just trying to find them, trying to find, and it wasn't always easy, all right? There was, I, I'll never forget, there was this one, we, we had found all of them except one, and this was a big deal because whichever team found them first, we were going to get special privileges. So I was like, we're going to find this. And so we're out there and we just cannot find this last one. Well, where is this? And I just keep, and I keep telling everyone, it's in, there was like this big, we don't call it, it wasn't a lake, I, a, a pond. I don't know what it was. It was a large body of water, okay? It was, it, and and we, I kept saying, it's got to be in there. It's got to be in there. It's got to be, it's got to be in there somewhere because all of our coordinates and everything kept tell, telling us it's there. And I remember, that's it. I don't care. I'm getting in the, and I just got in the water and started doing everything I can to find it, to find it, to find it, and find it. Boom, finally, there it was. And we ended up making it back and being the first team back with it. 
but we had to follow. In other words, we had to trust the coordinates. We had to trust the court, even though it didn't make any sense. I'm like, it has to be in the water. It has to be because we've been around it. We've been around the water. We've looked everywhere. We've looked in trees. We've looked everywhere. We've looked in bushes. We've looked anywhere and everywhere we could find. And I'm like, it has to be in the water. It's going to be hard to find. It's like one o'clock in the morning, but I don't, two o'clock in the morning, but I'm going to find it. You had to trust the coordinates. Well, and geocaching, you've got those coordinates. You got to trust them. You, you, you got, you've got to follow them, right? Now you've got to, well, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you have to follow your coordinates. So for me, geocaching starts with a treasure. And secondly, it absolutely relies on coordinates. It relies on the whole, it relies on the entire, you know, basically GPS. It, it, it relies on that completely. You must rely on that. You must trust that because without it, well, you're, 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 you're just wandering around in the dark, literally. Okay. Well, when it comes to the Bible, it's our treasure. It's the geocache, but guess what? We need coordinates. We need coordinates to be able to find the treasure within it. And I liken these coordinates to basically hermeneutical principles, Bible study principles, reading principles. There are hermeneutical principles, Bible study principles, and reading principles that you must rely on or you can't get anything out of it. See, one of the things that drives me crazy about the Bible, geocaching, it's very real. It's a physical activity, right? You've got your device, you've got coordinates, and then you have to physically go walking through it. And, and you, you've got to be using, you know, you've got to be using your mind. You've got to be thinking. Sometimes it may be like the, the, the object is 300 feet straight. And you may have to go in. That's not the best thing to do, but I got to rely on those coordinates, but it's something physical. I've got to be involved in it. There's nothing mystical. There's nothing supernatural. It's not some weird, like I get a feeling. No, it's like, I've got to follow these coordinates and physically go to that location and get there. And I have to use my mind and thinking and the best way in which to get there. Now I want to bring, I really want to drive that point home. Because when it comes to the Bible, some people almost ignore hermeneutical principles, reading principles, Bible study principles, and it turns into this weird, feely, emotional, mystical, I don't know what in the world people are doing. It's some bizarre craziness. Well, I just don't, I feel, uh, nobody cares, geocaching, nobody cares about your feeling. What do the coordinates say? When it comes to the Bible, your feeling is irregard. Your emotion is irregardless. It's not some mystical, weird, like, okay, God's going to give me some kind of idea. There's, there, no, it's a phys, in a sense, it's a physical activity. I have a Bible and I have actual principles that must be utilized and applied to the text for me to find the treasure. Now, some people don't like that. I say, you're making it too fleshly. It is fleshly in the sense that the, God has given me his word in a written form. All right? We, we so add a, a layer of mystery and mysticism to it that we so, I think, we, we, we so convolute the entire process. So I, I just started thinking about some basic principles. For example, I mean, you, we all know these principles. Words have meanings. Whoa, that's deep, isn't it? When I open my Bible, words have actual meanings. They do. They have actual meanings. And guess what my job is to do? My job is to find the meaning of those words using basic principles like definition, original language. What is the definition of the word in the Greek? What is the definition of the word in the Hebrew? If it's a Greek or Hebrew term, what? How was those words used in the arrest of that particular chapter or book or the Bible itself? We have, we have real tangible words. These words, in a sense, are our coordinates that's going to get us close to the treasure. We ignore the words. We ignore the meaning of the words. We're never going to get there. We're never going to get close. We're never going to get close. All right. For example, uh, another thing, um, so, uh, so words have meanings, definitions are needed, context for the words, 
right? So we need, we have words, words have meanings, we need the definition of those words, and we need to understand those words within the context. And what's the context of these words? Well, first it's the chapter, then it's the book, then it's the rest of the Bible. I got to understand these words in the context of the chapter, in the context of the book, and the context of the Bible. And guess what? Those books have a context, so I need, to, I need to use context to figure it out. Now, everyone says context, context, context until, I don't know, until, we've, until context no longer matters. We've been working on Matthew 24 for the Bible study exercise. You talk about words that need to be understood in context. We need to understand Matthew, all the words in Matthew 24 in the context of a chapter that's about, well, the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, first and foremost, right? So we got to understand those words in that context. It's just so important that we realize this, right? So, and not only that, books have a purpose. Then we got to understand, not only do we have to understand the book, and when we say the book have a context, I'll go back. Books have a context. The context is the historical setting. What, what is the historical setting for that book, right? That, that's very important in understanding the words. We talked about this in light of of. of of he- the book of Hebrews, understanding those words, but I can't understand those words apart from the context of the book. The, that book has a context, and that book was written prior to 70 AD, right? So then I understand now I have a historical setting, all right? Not only that, this is very important, books have a purpose. Now I understand the purpose of the book, so I've got to understand the words, i got to understand the context of those words, i got to understand the context of those words in light of the book. The book has its own context, and the book has its own purpose. I've got to know the purpose of the book so that I can understand the, 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 the book itself, and then with understanding the book, I can understand the words that are used within the book. I need all of that. Those of, all of that serves as basically my coordinates. And for some weird reason, things just get, people just go, like they see a word, like we see it in Matthew 24. Oh, it mentions earthquakes. Okay, then, then that means every time I see an earthquake, Jesus is about to come back. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Okay, that does mean earthquakes. Okay, but what's the context of that? Oh, that's about the destruction of the temple in 70 AD. So is it better to understand the term earthquakes there and, and referencing those earthquakes in light of the, leading up to 70 AD? Would that not make more sense? In other words, you context, 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 purpose, purpose, purpose. All right. So I think it's. I think we. In other words, we have to have all of those. All all of those principles serve as our coordinates. And I want to make sure we understand this. We have Bible study principles. Oh, well, think about it this way. There's really think of three categories for your coordinates. You have reading principles. This is just your basic rules of reading comprehension that you learn when you are a kid. Remember Augustine and his dealing with hermeneutics was very adamant about this. We learn to read usually way before we ever study the Bible. And the, those principles we learn in reading are the same principles used when we read the Bible. For some reason, we think we throw out those principles and, we, and there's some mysterious thing that we do. No, those rules of reading apply to the Bible. Did you learn, how, how good were you at reading comprehension? Right? And guess what those things, you learn about words and defining words. You learn words in context, right? You, you, you learn, all of, uh, uh, learn about all of that in reading. So all of the rules you learned about reading are applicable to the Bible, right? Then from reading, you learn, we're going to call it Bible study rules, but they're really rules about any kind of study, but Bible study rules. Now, Bible study is all about observation, 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 telling you how to take a text apart, outlining it, context, cross-references, all of that's uh, observation, observation, observation. So you have your reading coordinates, your Bible study coordinates, which then leads to your hermeneutical, con- uh, uh, your hermeneutical coordinates. You need all three. You need all three. Very important. And if you if if you care about the treasure, if you care about the treasure, right? So, in geocaching, we have a tre- we have a, a hidden treasure. And geocaching, we have coordinates. Now, number three, this is very important. And geocaching, we have um, what we'll, we'll call them devices. We'll call them tools. Right. And geocaching, you have your phone, 
You have a, you, you can use other, there's other kind of electronic devices you can use to help you find them, but you have a device, you have a tool, you have a tool. Well, and, and, and geocaching for the Bible or Bible study, you need tools. You need tools to be able to, uh, to do, to, to be able to find the treasure. And what tools do you need for Bible study? Well, what you need, obviously, you need a Bible dictionary. Obviously, Bible encyclopedias. Obviously, you need a tool like the Blue Letter Bible app so that you can look up the Greek and Hebrew. Obviously, you need anything that will help you with cross-referencing. These are basic tools. Oh, and you need a pencil and paper because one of the keys in Bible study is writing, 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 because the more you write, the better you observe. The best the best eyes you'll ever have are not the eyes you have in your head. It's a pencil. The more you write, the more you see, all right? Those are some ba- – in other words, we need tools. We need tools in order to be able to – and geocaching, look, you don't have your phone. You, you're yeah, Well, you're out of luck. You don't even know there's a geocache anywhere around you. So you need your phone and then the phone gives you the coordinates and get, and and literally will lead you step by step to the treasure. So you need your phone. You need that that te- tool. You may need a car okay, to be able to get to where you're going, right? In other words, if I look right now that there's a geocache in Abilene State Park, well I'm what how many miles away am I from it right now? 30 miles, I guess, from my house to the Abilene State Park, maybe 30. I would have to look. Well, I I, I mean, I could walk, but uh, having a car would probably make it a lot easier to get there. So you need tools, just like in geocaching. Bible study requires tools. It's amazing. Christians will spend money on all kinds of things, but in many cases, it will not spend money on a- adequate tools. That's one of the things I've always tried to provide the church Buy, you know, have, that's why there's a Bible dictionary in almost every pew. Why? I want everyone to have the tools. We have, we, we used to have, I don't even know, 10, like, we, I don't even remember how many strong concordances we had so that people could have one right there at the church. We've, we, we've had Bible encyclopedias. I've, I've tried to bring all the kind of tools that are there at the church anytime people need them, but you also need them. And, and, and 2022, just like you use your phone for geocaching, can use your phone, a lot of these tools for absolute free now, but you got to know how to use the tools. You got to use the tools. So in geocaching, we have a treasure, we have coordinates, and we have tools. Now I could break it down a little bit more, but I just want to, uh, here's what I really want to do. This is what I really want to just kind of go from a convicting standpoint. One of the things that I guess has always bothered me within Christianity. It really has. Is that on one hand, Christians get very, very, very sensitive, very, very defensive, and very, 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 very upset if the world says negative things about the Bible, attacks the Bible, denies the Bible, disrespects the Bible, does something like rip pages out of it, spit on it, burn it. Christians will get all up in arms about how the world handles the Bible. I remember when uh, Marilyn Manson, he used to, I think it was in the 1990s, he would take a Bible and rip pages out of it and Christians would lose their absolute mind. And it's like, oh man, Christians get so upset about that. Now on one hand, I understand it is the word of God and you don't want to see people, you know, disrespect it. I understand that. But I've, I've tried to I've tried to always say this. What I, I, I don't I don't really care what the world does. I mean, they're not believers. I don't, like their issue is not how their issue is salvation. Their issue is not whatever they're doing that bothers me. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to try to make them act like they're Christians because they're not. What they need is salvation. But whenever I see things that I'm upset about, I try. I don't always do a good job, but I try to stop and go I'll look at myself. Look at myself. Let's look at the church first. Let's look at Christians first. And I feel like Christians say lots of lofty things about the Bible. Oh, it's the word of God. It's inspired. It's amazing. It's treasure. It's food. It's, it's a sword. We, 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 know, we know all the right words to say. Like we can win, we could win a, a, you know, a, a Bible trivia contest about all of the wonderful things about God's word. And we could get the Awana medal and we, 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 we can get, we, you know, we can get all the recognition in the world. But when it really comes down to it, 
what I have seen is that Christians don't really treasure God's word as much as they say they do. Christians are a lot of talk, not a lot of action when it comes to really loving the word of God, studying the word of God, reading the word of God, digging into the word of God, learning all of the, the, the basically learning the coordinates and learning all of those principles about the coordinates, coordinates so that you can use them correctly and then use them in actual meaningful Bible study. Christians talk about how great the Bible is, but they don't demonstrate how great the Bible is. We, we say, the man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And all Christians will say, amen. And then you raise your hand and go, okay, so if this is spiritual food, well, when was the last time did you do any actual eating? See, Christians love to say, put the Bible on the shelf and go, there is my spiritual food. Haven't eaten in six months, but it's my spiritual food. Oh, it's treasure, but I'm not going to go dig for it. I'm not going to go look for it. See, we, we love to talk. Christians will engage in lots of activities. Man, they'll go on vacation. They'll go hiking, skiing, fishing, hunting, so many things. For, for the ability to supposedly get, gain a little bit of rest, relaxation, fun so that they can see a mountain so that they can see a sunset whatever they they will spend time money and effort to go to travel whatever the case may be so they can get a good instagram picture whatever the case may be christians will do lots of things i just don't see that same kind of effort by many put forth in the word of god now yesterday we were not gone for that many hours, but we had to get in a car, drive to the Abilene State Park, pull into the parking place, go into the, the ranger station, pay our entrance fee to the park. I think it was $5 per adult. Got into the park, had to go find, we found, uh, there was multiple trails. We went to, I guess, the main, major major trail there in uh, the Abilene State Park. I think, it, I think it's... Uh, I think it's called the Elm Creek Trail or just the uh, the Nature Trail. I think it used to just be the Nature Trail. Now, now I've broken them off into different trails, right? And then we had to make sure we had the, the uh, geocaching uh, app on the phone. Then we had to pull up the app, look for the next one, tap on it, and then start our journey looking for it. And, it, and we ended up getting lost, couldn't try <laughs> – Certain individuals tried to cross the creek and their shoe, uh, they ended up in the water. And, uh, well, yeah, that, that, that wasn't, I guess it was fun. Uh, but yeah, people ended up scraped up. Some were bleeding because we were going through the wood. It, it was, it was an ordeal. I mean, we were laughing and having fun by, by it all. And before it was all done, we did find the geocache. We did finally find it. We found one. We were at, I mean, we could have spent the rest of the day trying to find the others. But finally, by the time we found the one, everybody was done and everybody was ready to go. And then we had to walk back to the car, get back in the car and drive all the way back to Abilene, Texas. So we took hours. Now, it was fun, great, wonderful, not condemning it in any way, shape or form. Why are we so willing to do that kind of stuff for so many things? But for some Christians, the concept of sitting down and engaging in meaningful Bible study on a Saturday, a Friday, any time, just seems like so, it's so out of character, even for many Christians. I mean, I've talked about this so many times when I first became a Christian and I would, I'd go up to the church on a Friday night and I couldn't get the teenagers to come up to the church on a Friday night to study the Bible. Nobody wanted to study the Bible. And I'm like, well, why am I the only Christian who wants to study the Bible? Why, 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 why? And I cannot tell you how many I've tried to teach the Bible study methods. Now, I've never had a woman tell me this, but I've had many Christian men saying, I'm never going to do the Bible study methods. Not going to do them. Just not going to do them. I've never had a Christian woman tell me that, but Christian men are just basically almost braggadocious. Like, I'm not going to do the Bible study methods. I'm like, okay, well, there you go, man. I don't know what you're proving, but you're not proving much of anything to me. I got, I, I, it was just bizarre. Like, why would you even tell me that? But I, I, it's, it's been really bizarre. And it's like, why can't you get, like, what's the deal? Like, like how dare, like, it just seems like some crazy concept for some men 
to do so. Now, maybe they're not, it, that, it's not their natural, natural inclination. And look, Christianity is all about going against our natural inclination, right? I mean, that's the thing. If you, if you're going to be a part of a religion, I'll just use that term, where the revelation from your God is placed in written form, you didn't think of the implications of that? <laughs> okay. That means God wants you to study that written form to understand his will, his way, his mind, his wisdom, right? That, that's the, the, the whole thing. As a newborn babe desired the sincere milk of the word of God. The, the Bible doesn't say, well, if you're a man and you're not really into reading and you're not really into notebooks and you're not really into pencils and you're not really into study, you know what? You don't need it. Now, look, if you're Catholic, by all means, just listen to your church. You just rely on the church. You listen to the magisterial authority to give you the, the divine interpretation. But if you're not a Catholic, then what in the world? You're, not only did you decide to become a part of a religion, humanly speaking, I, I'm not getting into a whole discussion of soteriology. Obviously, I believe in the sovereignty of God and salvation. But I'm just saying from a human perspective, you decided to be a part of a religion that places its, its revelation in written form. And then the God of that religion says, study, read, memorize, meditate day and night. And then you, and you, and and then not only that, you decide to be in a, a a form of that religion that says no, not the church. The church doesn't have the authority. The Bible is the authority, and my job is to study it. I don't. The church can't tell me what it believes. It's my job to figure out what it believes. You then take on that, and then decide I'm not going to actually do any of it. it <laughs> I, I call it into question. There's people right now. Uh, so what time is it? 12, 27 p.m. I guarantee you there's people all over Abilene right now. Now, when I say people, there, there, there's, a, there's a small number of people all over Abilene. In other words, driving around looking for geocaches. There's people right now in the Abilene State Park today, probably on that same trail that they, hopefully they find the box where we left it. Okay, we left it where it was supposed to be. Hopefully they find it. Hopefully they find the things in it. And um, th- there was people out there participating in that today. And that's awesome. That's great. I'm glad that that's a a great form of entertainment. It's not controversial. There's not like, how dare you watch that movie? The geocache is not put there by Disney, so we don't have any of those controversies. So it's it's a non-controversial thing that people can do as a family and get out and and, and, and about. That's wonderful. That's great. I'm so glad it exists. I, I do. It's wonderful. It's great. I'm glad that people have fun and cheap. I mean, you, you don't have to go spend a lot of money to, to, to do that, this. So I hope people get out even today and go geocaching. But we have the ultimate treasure right here in my hands. You can't see it. It's a Bible. The ultimate treasure. The Word of God. And I'm literally supposed to desire this more than gold and silver, and more than the honey and the honeycomb, more than food. I'm to desire this like a baby desires milk. You don't have to tell a baby, hey, you need some milk. Not babies. Like, wah, wah, wah. They need that milk. They want it. They will cry. They will be unhappy unless they get it. I just wish sometimes that same desire for God's word was found within Christians. And, and and we've uh, I could I could pull up the studies right now. I, I posted I posted an article in the Discord channel um, about how you know that that they're, they're the people who do studies about Bible engagement, Bible study, Bible reading. They're absolutely shocked because Bible engagement, Bible study, Bible reading has dropped to like an all time low, and they're like, "What in the world is going on?" Again, I, I don't know what I don't know why I, I I've never been able to understand Christians. Some Christians, it's just Bible study is not even a priority. It's not even a priority. They'll go a week without it, and they don't care. They're not bothered by it. They're not even convicted. 
Like, there'll be many Christians who'll be more irritated about what I'm saying today than convicted by what I'm saying. They'll be more put off. Well, who does he think he is? How dare does... I I don't have to do that. Well, you're right. You, you don't have to do anything. You can do whatever you want. I'm not here... I'm just simply saying that, that the Bible is the Word of God. It is your spiritual food. It is your spiritual wisdom. It is your sword. It is every... I mean, it is... You should desire it and love it. And if you don't, you have to at least ask yourself, what is the problem... Uh, don't get mad at me. Ask yourself, what is the issue within you? I, I think at some point it's just, I, I, I Christians, I, you know what? It's it, in a roundabout way. I'll just end with this. If you ever go geocaching with a kid, <laughs> uh, it can be it can be fun, right? Because geocaching for a kid, they'll look at the phone. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's go, let's go find the treasure. Now you'll you'll always have probably depending if you have like more than one kid. One kid will typically be like, we have to find this, and they like they become committed and they're going to do it. And the other one will be like, oh yeah, geocaching, that's cool. Okay, how far is it? Oh, okay. And you can almost immediately see that their mind is thinking, ugh, okay. And then within about five seconds, they're like. Butterfly, butterfly, butter. And you're like, where are you going? Oh, oh, what about that? No, no, no. We're looking for the geocache. Oh, but, and they're, they're, they've already lost, like they don't even, they're, they're, they're so distracted. Who knows where they're, they're off. Who knows what they're doing? You know, they're looking at, oh, an ant. Oh, a lizard. Oh, look, a bird. Look, anything. Hey, are we going home yet? Hey, do you have any water? Hey, can I have some candy? And you're like, no, geocaching. G, say it with me. G, we're here to find the geocache, right? That's what we're looking for, right? Right? Not, not anything else. And sometimes I think that's, that's Christians. We've got this amazing treasure. We, we believe it's a treasure. We believe it's the word of God. But then immediately, butterfly, butterfly, butterfly. butterfly. And I understand there's a lot of butterflies, metaphorically speaking, that pops up in each and every day. Right now, it's Saturday. Now, for those of you who know me, Thursday night at 11 p.m., that's when all new music drops. And so I start on Thursday night. I, sometimes I stay up all night. Music, 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 music. Well, I haven't had a chance to really sp do a lot of deep diving in all the new releases this week. So there's a lot of butterflies right now yelling at me going, hey, 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 what are you doing upstairs, downstairs, put on the headphones, come on, turn on the Yamaha preamp, yeah, let's get going, we got things, to, we got, we got music to listen to, oh, there's baseball, there's the USFL, I've been watching a little bit of that, it's weird that the stadium is empty, but I would have been watching that, oh, last night, I can go on and on and on, oh, there's a movie I definitely want to watch today, that, that, that's the plan, maybe to watch this evening, okay, I'll see, mm. but I got, I got, I got, now I got my job, I got sermon prep, I already started working on that early this morning, so, but I, I, I could be doing some Bible study. So I, I'm not coming at this like, hey, I'm, I'm the one who's all disciplined, no, I, I, I struggle just like everyone else. It's just sometimes I just think we forget. So I just want you to think about geocaching today and just think about one, just I want you to be hopefully maybe a little convicted about actually treating God's word as a treasure and actually studying it. But I, I think the whole idea of just out there with those coordinates looking, to me, it just, it just made Bible study just that much more like, okay, here we go. I got my pencil. I got my Bible. I got all of my coordinates in my head. Let's get to work. Let's get to work, okay? Right, let's get to work, all right? So I got Matthew 24 here. I got Matthew 24, all right? Jesus goes out of the temple, all right? Tells them that temple's gonna be destroyed. They ask these questions, okay? All right, now I got verse 14. Oh boy, that, I don't know what I do with verse 14. Well, I got this abomination of desolation. Okay, what is that referring to? Okay, that that's problematic. Wait a minute. Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, the, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Wow, that that seems to be uh, difficult. All right, what do I do with that? All right, then then I start and well, yeah, I could you know, well, I got the days of Noah. And wait, there's going to be two people. One's going to be taken away. Wait, who's the one taken away? All right, I've got I got things to work on. That requires work, time. 
using my coordinates, trying to figure it out. I would hope that we could find joy in that. Sadly, for some, it becomes a religious burden. It becomes a legalistic thing. And I don't want want it to ever be legalistic. I want it to be fun. As much fun as people have geocaching, I wish we could find that same joy in studying the Bible. I wish it could be a joy. It could be fun. It could be, I I think for some people, it, it, it becomes like a legalistic thing. I wish it could be like, hey, it's it's Friday night. We could do this. Yeah, but you know what else we could do? Ooh, we could work on Matthew 24 and, 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 and you could get Christian and be like, yeah, let's get together and do that. Let's do that, man. I'll bring the snacks. Let's do it. Let's, let's get some notebooks. Let's get all of our tools. Let's, let's go, let's go, let's work on it. But to, to get Christians, Christians to be like, eh, nah, nah. And typically when Christians plan activities, there's food, there's quote unquote fellowship. There's lots of talking, but not Bible study because Bible study seems like something like it's not seen as something joyful. It's not seen as something as fun. And I don't know where the church, maybe the church messed up there. But I think some people see study and maybe that's the difference. Some people see study. They just have flashbacks to school and they hated school. I hated everything about school except for the study, okay? I hated the people. I hated the whole cliques and and you got to fit in and I hated all of that. But put me in the library and give me some books. I'm good to just leave me alone, okay? Just get, what do you want me to study? Okay, everybody leave me alone. Everybody leave the school and I'm good to go. I didn't need the socializing. I didn't need the people. Just give me the study. Maybe that's why then Bible study to me is a joy. So maybe that's not fair then. It's not fair for me to challenge other people who don't find joy in it. So I, I guess I can't relate to the people who don't find joy in it. Say there was when I was a younger Christian, it's almost like, okay, what is wrong with you people? You're not saved. Now I realize, okay, wait a minute. They're saved by an imputed righteousness and they're not saved because of how much Bible study they do. So now I kind of have had to change that philosophy. Now, it's more like, okay, why don't you love it? Why don't you desire it? Why don't you find joy in it? And that only you can answer. I can't answer it for you. I wish I could, but I can't. I would pray that you find joy in it. And and I I really would just go geocaching just one time and just see the correlations. I think you'll see the correlation. Or at least in my mind, maybe, maybe you'll like, you'll go geocaching and go, what are you talking about? I don't see any correlation to me as I was out there looking for it. Remind me of sitting right up here with the Bible open going, man, let's, let's figure this out, right? Let's figure this out. Like if I take the uh, devotional for today that I have here, it is April the 23rd. If I open this up, Luke 2, 25 to 35, there's my treasure. Luke 2, 25 to 35. Now, I got a pencil. I got a notebook. Boom. I Now I've got the coordinates. I know all those techniques. Let's jump in. And I'll, I'll use my tools. And I could start working on Luke 2, 25. And I could spend the day working on Luke 2, 25 to 35. I literally, I could spend all day working on it. All day. And not, not out of legalistic need, but out of want to. Now, that doesn't make me more spiritual. I think, I think a part of that is a fleshly thing because I love studying. So that's a fleshly thing. So I can't, like there was a point in my Christian life where I would have made myself feel like, see, I'm more spiritual. Now I realize I'm not more spiritual, but I just wish that I would hate that the only way to get Christians to love God's word is they already have to have a fleshly desire for study. We, I would hope that somehow spiritually we could develop a joy and a love in it. But I'll stop right there. Everyone have a great day. You can email me, newsif at yahoo.com. Thanks for those who are participating in the chat. Um, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, if, if someone has never gone geocaching, and if you do it one time, just one time, I would be curious your experience and how you see a, again, think of it when you're doing it, how it is a physical 
acting out of biblical hermeneutics. I, I, that, that's what I want you to kind of, hopefully if you feel that, then, then, then maybe something was accomplished. But I'll stop there. We'll, we'll be doing live broadcasts throughout the afternoon and into the evening. I don't know how many I'm going to do today. I got, I got up to a late start today. So, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. I've got a lot to do. And so if there's something you want me to discuss, let me know. But I, I do have a lot on my list, but I'll see what we can get to. All right, thanks for listening. Everyone. Have a great day. God bless.